Hello and welcome to part one of this five-part series on the Genome Browser. My name is Michael Cimenti and I'll be your narrator for this series. Uh, in this first tutorial we'll, we will explore an overview of the Genome Browser. It's a very powerful tool that pulls together a wide range of genomic data and annotations from a variety of authoritative research sources. These annotations are continuously updated as new data becomes available. I'll show you how to select a genome assembly that you want to view We'll talk about how to get around that assembly and explore it more deeply, and talk about some basic track and view controls to control what you see on the page. So let's get started. The first thing to do is open a browser and go to Google. So I'll open a Safari window, and I'll say Google. At Google, I'll type in simply UCSC Genome Browser, and you can see that the result that you want is the first result, so we just click on that, and I'll make it full screen here. Alternatively, you could have typed the URL, which is https colon slash slash genome.ucsc.edu slash index dot html. This takes you to the UCSC Genome Bioinformatics homepage. At the top of this page, there's an About section that contains some information about the page and links to various tools. Below that, there is a News section that contains information about new releases and new annotation tracks. On the top and left side of the page are links to tools that are related to the Genome Browser. For now, we'll get started by going to the top left and clicking Genome Browser. Now this doesn't take us right away to the Genome Browser, instead it takes us to a page called the Gateway. The Gateway allows us to select which assembly we'd like to view, and we can do that by selecting under these drop-down menus, Group, Genome, Assembly, and then there's the Position box that shows us what position we'll be viewing, and then the Search box, which is a very powerful field that we can search on a variety of uh, terms, and I'll talk more about that later. So we'll select Group Mammal. Under Genome we'll select Human. There's also Mouse and a wide variety of other animal genomes available. Under Assembly we'll stick with the default, the most current December 2013 release of uh, the HD38 assembly of Human. Under Search Term we will select a specific gene. I'll enter SOD1 and we'll go click on that box because we want to go look at this SOD1 gene specifically. Okay, let's click Submit and go through to the Genome Browser. Okay, we're now in the Genome Browser. There's a lot going on here, so let's break it down and talk about it uh, piece by piece. I'll provide a sort of overview of the whole page, and then we'll get down into the details. Uh, at the top of the Genome Browser is the Genome Viewer, which is the area where the data is displayed. This gives you a sort of diagrammatic view of the genome. The positions and bases in each assembly are fixed and do not change except between assemblies. On the other hand, the annotation and data tracks can change as new data become available. You can see that at the top of the page there are a series of buttons that allow you to pan the view left and right. You can pan by 10, 47, or 95 percent each way. So for example, I'll pan to the right by 47 percent and then pan back to the left. To the right of that there are zoom in and zoom out controls that let you zoom in and out 1.5, 3, and 10 times. You can also zoom down to the base level or zoom out by 100 fold. So I'll go ahead and zoom out by 100 fold. Now you can see that we're looking at the SOD1 gene uh, zoomed way, way out. I'll go ahead and zoom back in twice by 10 fold to get back to our original view. There, now we're back to our original view. Now below these controls we have a box that shows you the current position, the chromosome, and the range. There's also a number that shows you the width of the screen and base pairs. For example, right now we see that there's 9,310 base pairs on the screen. And then we have the search box, which is a very powerful tool. And I'd like to go through some of the valid search terms that you can use now to explore the genome. Search terms include things like chromosome 7, which would take you to chromosome 7. 
you can say chromosome 3, 1 to 100,000, which specifies a range on chromosome 3, or you can say chromosome 3, 10,000 plus 2,500, which is again a start point in a range. Additionally, you can specify a scaffold, or you can specify a chromosome band, like 20p13, which would be band p13 on chromosome 20. Also, you can specify an entree gene ID, or an EST accession number, or a RefSeq ID. Finally, you can specify a gene name in the common nomenclature, like p53 or SOD1, as we've seen. That will get you all mRNAs related to p53 or SOD1. You can type in a keyword like breast cancer to look at mRNAs related to breast cancer. You can put in a protein domain like zinc finger to see all zinc fingers in the database. And you can even enter a author name like Evans to see all mRNAs related to that specific author. Below the search box, we have the chromosome ideogram. This is an overview of the current chromosome that we're viewing, in this case, chromosome 21. You can see that the bands are highlighted in different colors and given their designations. The red bar shows where we are located currently. You can click and drag to resize the view. As you can see, that green box now would resize that view way out. And this brings up a dialog that says, should we jump to this new position that has 3.6 million base pairs? And I'll say cancel. You can also just simply click somewhere and move around. Below the chromosome ideogram, we have a very important track called the base position track. This track is always at the top. It has the genome index um, by tick marks that show you where in the genome you are. You can see on this page, we go from 31,660,500 to 31,668,500 on the right. There's also a scale that shows you the current zoom level. So right now the scale is showing two kilobases, and to the right of the scale it shows you the current assembly. This is useful when you're making figures to have a record of what assembly you're viewing so you don't become confused later, and so that your readers in your manuscripts can access the same assembly so that they can find the genes, exons, and introns that you're talking about. There's another trick with the base position track that's very useful, and that is that you can use it to select a specific region. If you click on it and drag, you will open a box and that box allows you to zoom to that region. I could say zoom in here, and it will zoom me in to that specific region. I'll go ahead and zoom back out. Now we're looking at the full SOD1 gene again. Now before I talk about what all the data tracks and annotation tracks mean, I want to talk about what I call the middle page controls. These are controls uh, at the middle of the page, below the genome viewer window, but above the track control win uh, track controls, and these do a number of important things. So starting left to right, you have the track search button. This lets you search for specific annotation tracks by keyword. Then you have default tracks and default order. These allow you to return to the default track view, which is displayed above, or the default order if you've reordered tracks. This is useful if you've added a number of complicated annotation tracks and you just want to get back to a simplified view. To the right of that is the hide all button. This would hide all tracks. I'll go ahead and click that now. You can see that all tracks disappear except for the base position track. I'll turn default tracks back on. Now we're back to the view we had before. There's an add custom tracks button which we'll talk about in a later tutorial. Track hubs button which we'll talk about later. The configure button is very powerful and lets you configure a number of things about the browser all at once. I'll click through and show you that you can configure all of the tracks in a sort of list view all at the same time. You can also configure the image width and the text size and there are a number of other options that are useful here. So I'll click Submit to get back to our previous view. Now we have the Reverse button. This allows you to reverse the display of the genome from left to right. You'll notice now that we're going to higher numbers to the left instead of higher numbers to the right, and now I'll reverse it again, and now the higher numbers are on the right. Finally, there's the Resize view, which if you change the size of your browser window, you can resize the genome browser to fit within it. And then the Refresh view. If you've made changes to track controls, you can refresh the view. Okay, now I want to talk about the buttons below the genome browser window. These are called the track controls. They're organized by type. As you can see, each blue bar has a specific type, like mapping and sequencing, genes and gene predictions, 
phenotype and literature, etc. Under each section are a series of related data tracks and drop-down menus to allow you to decide how you want to display those tracks. Additionally, if you want to learn more about each track, you can click on its name and it'll take you through to a page that describes the track, the methods used to create it, and will give you references if they are available. Keep in mind that the data in the tracks may change over time as new data become available. And also that all assemblies do not necessarily have all of these tracks available. The human assembly, of course, is very well studied, and so many, many uh, data tracks are available here. But something that's more obscure, like a ferret, for example, or turtle, might not have uh, nearly as many of these tracks available. So it really depends on the nature of your research, what is available to display. Now before we wrap up this part of the tutorial, I want to talk about some tips and tricks for viewing the Genome Browser. The first one is that you can click and drag in the main window to scroll left and right. So now I'm clicking and I'm dragging to the left to move to the right. And you can see that the view refreshes. I'm clicking and dragging to the right to move back to the left. Additionally, you can highlight a region by selecting the base position track clicking and dragging and letting it go, a dialog comes up and instead of saying zoom in, you can click highlight and you can set a highlight on that region. This is useful for making figures if you want to call attention to a specific region or just reminding yourself where you were as you browse around the genome. Unfortunately, you can only display one highlighted region at a time to the best of my knowledge. So if I were to highlight another region, this current blue window would uh, go away. Finally, you can reorder tracks depending on which ones you want to see near the top by clicking over here on the left and moving them. You can see that the histone acetylation track is moving up and down as I drag it. The only track that can't be moved down is the base position track. So that's all for this tutorial. Please join me for part two where I'll describe navigating a gene, turning on and off annotation tracks, changing views, and getting more details about a gene and linking out to related databases and other resources.